Welcome to Believe in Colts, where Lawrence Owen and Dequel Jackson brings you everything about the shoe. What's going on, Colts Nation? I'm Lawrence Owen with Believe in Colts podcast. Now, uh, if you can see, I'm not with Dequel Jackson today. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see this. If you're listening to the podcast, then uh, Dequel Jackson is otherwise engaged today he has uh some uh things he had to take care of so i'm gonna be handling the show solo so this is gonna be great all right a lot of great news i learned something today i learned that for every good thing in life something negative happens and reverse whenever something negative happens a positive thing happens in in retrospect, it is what it is. Um, it's that whole yin-yang thing that goes on in the world. And we know it. Uh, a lot of people, they believe in it. And I think I believe in it after today, okay? Uh, first and foremost, I found out that today that the Indianapolis Colts placed three people on the injury reserve. And we knew that they were probably going to go to injury reserve. We knew that Sam Ellinger, the quarterback, backup quarterback, um, had a knee injury, a sprain, probably go to IR. He went to IR. We knew that T.Y. Hilton had a neck injury, had surgery apparently. He went to IR. And wide receiver Desmond Patman, who had an absolute fantastic Preseason leading all receivers in receptions also goes to IR due to a foot injury. But on the positive note, the Indianapolis Colts was able to return some people from the COVID-19 list. Starting quarterback Carson Wentz, starting center Ryan Kelly, and wide receiver Zach Paschal. That, that's Three to IR, three back on the 53-man roster. And uh, I'm going to say that the guys back on the 53-man roster who practiced today um, are, I hate to say, more important to the team, but let's face it, right? I mean, when you're talking about your starting center, your starting uh, quarterback, and maybe the number three or four wide receiver as opposed to the number three quarterback, uh, the number six wide receiver, and, you know, maybe your number one wide receiver. You take those, and you know, it, it seems like uh, we got better back than we lost. Um, in other news, in my personal life, I had that whole giveth and taketh away. Uh, <laughs> I woke up this morning, at 7 o'clock this morning, in my personal life, Um I had a dream. I had a cat that's an inside-outside cat, right? And he'd been missing for a week, and there was a terrible, awful, you know that smell when something is dying and rotting and decaying? Had that smell throughout this whole process of that week under my house. And I was afraid it was my cat because, you know, it was during that period of time that he was missing. Well, this morning I I woke up from a dream where I saw him Walked outside barefoot, walked out to the back of my car for no unknown reason, and there he was, sitting right there beside my front tire of my truck, and I was like, yay, and he come running in. But then the yin-yang thing happened, and the high school that my son goes to um, had a gun situation where a kid brought a gun to school and the school went down on lockdown and I had to go get him and escort him out of the building today. So again, good things happen, bad things happen. Uh, that's just how life works, right? Um, but, in other news on top of that, I want to congratulate an ex-player for the Indianapolis Colts, who's been on the practice squad last year, was on uh, 
the 90-man roster this offseason during preseason absolutely showed out. Showed out in training camp with both the Davises out and Blackman was injured. Andre Sachere had an absolute incredible, I mean, like he stepped up, did great. Made the original 53-man roster before, you know, moves started happening. And then he was cut. And before the Colts could get him to the practice squad, the Philadelphia Eagles signs him. So, congratulations. At least Andre Sachere is still employed in the NFL, and he'll be playing for the Indianapolis Colts X. Offensive coordinator who is now the head coach over in Philadelphia, Nick Sirianni. I'm very happy about that, man. Um, yeah, I got some, as I said, I'm live right now. I got the chat rolling right now. And some people in here, uh, Mr. J567 says he was really upset that uh, the Colts waived him. And I was too, but I'm not the GM, right? I'm not Chris Ballard. Uh, Faye's asking uh, DeQuell in here, and no, he's not. Um, he has some things going on that he had to take care of. He, We will be back on Monday together, so my apologies again that DeQuell Jackson is not here with us today. Um, but a lot of great stuff we're going over today. I mean, all the news that I just talked about, think about it. Carson Wentz, Ryan Kelly, Zach Pascal, all out there practicing again. This is huge, not just for Carson Wentz, but for Ryan Kelly as well, right? I mean, that quarterback center handoff is so important. So important. You do not want mistakes made there. And then, of course, you know, not just the handoff, but you also got to realize, you know, protection, they both have to identify and, and be on the same page when it comes to protection on whether or not they're recognizing blitzes, where the protection packages are coming from, what they're doing, stuff like that. And they're out there doing that today. Or, well, they did today. So, and then they will the rest of the week. He said that uh, he did that, his first full pads today. As I said, you know, I was late today because I was watching uh, his press conference. And he was talking about, you know, how he was out there just playing his butt off and, and, and his foot was, was holding up just fine. Felt like it was still in a good place, even with the full team reps today. Um, he was asked if he thought that he might be able to start against Seattle. And he said he is incredibly optimistic. But in the end, it is on his doctors and trainers whether he can. Some, 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 something that I think we need to take out of this whole COVID situation where he was forced five days off could have had a, a slight positive impact to go with the negative impact that, you know, he wasn't practicing that we don't think about. These were five extra days to where he's not roaming around, putting his foot through a whole bunch of stuff, Right giving his foot more time to heal and get right. So there is a better chance that his foot will be in, be in, a, in a positive, good place for him to start, in my opinion. Now, does that mean that, you know, he's, he's, he's going to be in the, in the right light with the wide receivers and the snap counts and the protection schemes and all that? I don't know. You know, he may not have his timing down with his wide receivers. He did have a lot of time uh, before training camp where he brought a lot of these guys in and worked with them quite a bit, you know. But to be fair, uh, he's only done, what, a total of five and a half days of pitch and catch with uh, his wide receivers, tight ends, and running backs. But the fact that, you know, he did have those five days extra for that foot to heal after the week where he was out there, you know, doing those personals and seven on sevens. I think that's a positive thing that we could take out of this. Okay. Um, I, I get it. I understand, you know, what if he's not right, but you know what? In my thought process, he's got to be there first, right? 
So his foot has to be healthy enough for him to play in the first place. So that's step one. So I, I believe that that five days off helped that step one to come to fruition. Now step two will be all on him. And he said that these next three days, yes, he's going to spend some quality family time, but he is going to be working with a lot of guys as well, throwing around, going over to playbook, talking with Kelly, talking to a lot of the guys, uh, working on it on his own outside of practice, which, you know, is good. That's what a leader does. And I, I'm glad that he's he's taking that up. Love the fact that Ryan Kelly's back as well. You know, um, he, he did have a full week of practice after that hyperextended elbow uh, last week before he got put on COVID um, the, on the protocol. And, of course, Zach Paschal, who has just been the most consistent wide receiver so far this training camp and preseason for the Indianapolis Colts. Well, Technically, the most consistent wide receiver during preseason games was Desmond Patman, who's on IR now with that foot injury. But during training camp, you know, while I was there watching, Zach Paschal was always there. Always catching the football, never dropping it. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw it, but he put a move. He put a move on Kenny Moore in training camp and left him in the dust. I'm glad we got his talent back for Carson Wentz to work with. So, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to watch week one against Seattle. I think it's going to be a great game to watch. And you guys ain't going to want to miss next week's episodes as Dequell Jackson comes back um, on Monday. And then either Monday or Thursday, I don't know which day, I'm working with the Believe Podcast Network to get the Seattle team here and we're going to discuss the game, you know, go back and forth, discuss the game, know a little bit about them. They'll learn a little bit about us. I think it's going to be great, man. Really, really think it's going to be great. Love seeing Strawn receiving attention from good morning football. Loyalist says, absolutely right. Peter Shregs kind of Threw him out there. It's one of the top five feel-good stories of the NFL. Seventh round pick comes in and just balls out. Not only did he make the 53, but he's in a position to where if he continues to grow the way he has during training camp, that he could put himself in a position to play some quality time this season. You don't see that very often from seventh round picks. You just don't. You just don't. Um, Brandon Woods says, just glad that, you know, neck injuries can be career ending in an instant. That is true. T.Y. Hilton, uh, Frank Reich was talking about that as well, saying that, you know, he believes that this is not a long term thing for T.Y. Hilton, that very much similar to. Uh, Carson Wentz and and um, Quentin Nelson that it was not an invasive surgery and they feel that he'll only be gone a few weeks, not very long at all. So that's positive news as well that came out today. So excellent. Um, I think that this is going to be a, a fun time. Man, I'm actually really excited to see. I mean, you think about the offensive line is basically there right now, out there practicing. Outside of Fisher, you got Davenport sitting at left tackle, but everybody else is there, right? Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, Mark Lewinsky, Braden Smith, all those guys are there. So that's going to make the job of Davenport better because he's surrounded by high-quality offensive linemen. Not to mention, he's going to have guys like Jack Doyle and Mo Alley Cox, who are excellent blockers and good at giving assistance on chip blocks and stuff like that as well. So they will be able to help. It's not going to be like what we saw in preseason, right? We're not going to see one-on-ones and vanilla and all of that. We're going to see an actual team. And Frank Wright's going to know where the weaknesses and the strengths are on this team. And he's going to go out there and he's going to game plan for 
a game. Unlike in the preseason, where it was just like, here's the play, go do it, you know? And I think that is what I'm really, really, really excited about. Uh, I'm going to get through the chat here in a second now. Uh, I have been getting in a little bit right now, but, you know, here we go. Matt Stansberry in the chat says that he's surprised that they kept so many defensive tackles. And not just defensive tackles, defensive tackles and defensive ends total, right? They kept five defensive tackles, six defensive ends. That's 11 defensive linemen. 11. That's a lot even for Chris Ballard. But when asked, when they asked him, hey, you know, why'd you keep so many defensive linemen? You know, because they're defensive linemen. Because they are so hard to come by. And when you have a bunch of quality guys, you want to try to keep them. And I get it. And I understand. But at the same time, I think that those defensive linemen, we're going to end up losing one at some point, uh, I think early in the season, when some people start coming back from IR, right? When we start seeing T.Y. or Desmond Patman or something like that come back from IR, I think we probably end up losing a, uh, one of those defensive linemen. Because, yes, it's hard to keep them, but at the same time, there's a reason why you generally don't have 11 guys on the defensive line because you need that help somewhere else. Um, I, I, but you know what? I trust in Ballard. I trust John Davis says it in the, in the chat as well. I trust in what he does. I mean, he has put together a team. He's got a plan. He's been working on that plan since the beginning, since he got here. And he's done a very, very good job. Uh, there's a lot of people that I think that could probably go. I was surprised by the 53-man roster cuts, personally. Uh, I think there was two or three guys that I just I didn't expect to make it. But one guy that a lot of people are like, why did he make it, was Chris Williams. And I was high on Chris Williams. I thought Chris Williams played incredibly well uh, through the preseason games. And we saw him in training camp. He plugs, he's been plugging holes very, very well. He's not getting moved off the line very much. I think that he has really showed out. And uh, even though a lot of people had their eye on other defensive linemen in that part, I, I thought Chris Williams was one of those guys that really stepped up and, and showed that he could play that part. Because we're going to need somebody. You think about it. You remember last year, Week 10? Against the Tennessee Titans, when DeForest Buckner went on COVID protocol, when he when he got COVID and was out that game, and it was uh, it was Grover Stewart filling in his place, and then the backup for him, they ran right to where Grover normally is sitting, all the time. They ran in that side of the field all the time, and Derrick Henry just plowed us because we didn't have our two great defensive tackles there. So quality depth at defensive tackle is very important. Um, <laughs> no, Matt Stansberry in here. Is that a song by Tom Petty? Good lineman, hard to find. You got lucky, babe. <laughs> what position do you think is our biggest need in the draft next year? Devin Ward asks. I am going to say probably... We might be looking at cornerback, but you know what? I don't know yet. I don't know what these guys are going to look like through the season. Who's going to develop? You know, we don't know. There are a lot of players in their second and third year that are going to uh, either rise or fall through the ranks as the season progresses. A lot of them. A lot of them. You know, a lot of people want to talk about Rocky Sin. I thought Rocky Sin had a really good training camp. There was a couple plays. Uh, in training camp where he got burnt. But you know what? Every every defensive back in the NFL gets burnt from time to time. What you don't hear about is when he locks someone down and nothing happens. Because well, that's not a headline, right? I mean, it's, it's true. But like I said earlier, when Zach Paschal burnt Kenny Moore, everybody wasn't talking about how Kenny Moore got burnt. 
No, they were talking about how Zach Pascal did such a great job, you know, and that's what happens to cornerbacks. Cornerbacks don't get talked about unless they get burnt or they make a big play. And Rock had some big plays in training camp, but because he got he was on the highlight film of like a Mike Strawn catch or something like that. That's what it is, you know. Or when Paris Campbell burned him downfield. Come on, it's Paris Campbell. He's gonna burn any cornerback downfield one on one. There's not there's not many cornerbacks in the NFL that can stay step for step with that dude. And that's that's all there is to it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I hope Deion Jackson sticks on our practice squad. Brandon Wood says and doesn't get picked up. Would love to have him as our third or fourth back next year. Obviously. Obviously, Deion Jackson. You know what? Benny LeMay as well, right? Benny LeMay. Uh, we got two guys out there. Here's the deal. We all know and expect that Jordan Wilkins won't be on the team next year. And I get it. And it sucks. For us as Colts fans, it's going to suck. Because Jordan Wilkins is a good running back. You don't go out there and get guys who who average 5.9 yards a carry uh, over a three-year career. You just That's not an average thing. Granted, limited snaps, averaging about 50, 50 carries a season. But still, you know, that's a heck of a yards per carry for averaging 50, uh, 50 carries a season, wouldn't you say? And so for us, for Colts fans, we're going to lose that after this year because I really think that he's going to get picked up by somebody that is a running back needy team. Um, and they're going to be able to afford, that team will be able to afford to give him a little bit more money than what the Colts can because the Colts are going to have decisions at running back ahead of him, right? Naheem Hines, Marlon Mack, uh, how are they going to look this year? If Marlon Mack plays the way we thought he was going to play last year, this year, he's going to be another guy. You know, same with Naheem Hines, right? The way Naheem Hines has been just getting better and better and better every year, we might not be able to afford Naheem Hines. I mean, it sucks. I'd hate to see him go. Same with Marlon Mack. But at the same time, you know, uh, they've got big fish to fry, big contracts. They've been dropping that money on people, right? The big money. When we're talking about, you know, Ryan Kelly's, uh, DeForest Buckner, uh, we're talking about guys that are making fat cash, right? Uh, Braden Smith, Darius Leonard, um, you know, obviously Carson Wentz will hope that he plays well this year and lives up to his $20 million that he's getting paid this year. Granted, $20 million isn't exactly, you know, oh my goodness what the Colts are paying him this year. Uh, but for someone who led the NFL in interceptions and had one of the worst quarterback ratings in the NFL, that is a lot of money last year. Hopefully, he'll play a whole lot better with the Indianapolis Colts than what he did with Philadelphia. But guys, this is, like I said, this is um, Believe in Colts. And because it's the Believe in Colts, I'm going to keep this a little bit short. And I want to tell people, hey, if you're listening to this on a podcast, whether it's Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, or listening on the Believe Podcast Network website. Make sure you also go check out the video. You can find it on YouTube, on my channel, Lawrence Owen, and on the Believe in Colts podcast channel on YouTube. And of course, guys, if you're listening, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you go check out the podcast, the audio podcast, you know. Make sure you go subscribe and download and make sure that you you don't miss any ever because, yes, I don't have DeQuell Jackson with me, but that's not going to be an everyday thing. It, me and DeQuell will be talking about football. I utterly respect the things, the knowledge that he brings to this podcast. The two episodes that I have done with DeQuell Jackson have been absolutely fantastic. Now, that first one was more of a Q&A, like I was interviewing him. But let's be fair, guys. I mean, it's DeQuell Jackson. He was a Pro Bowl linebacker for the Colts. There was a lot of stuff about him that 
not only I, but you guys as well wanted to know about him. There's more questions that I have for him, but we'll we'll get to that at another point. Really appreciate every one of you guys. Um, my next episode, like I said, will be on Monday. So until then, thank you, thank you so much, each and every one of you. Uh, and until now, oh, well, you know what? I'm going to answer one more question from the live chat before I walk out. One more question. And it's not going to be Daniel Martin, Son and Felt's question of well, who's my favorite college team. Because I really don't have one. I have a few colleges that I like. And it's not like, you know, the Colts where it just utterly, you know, fills you know, me with complete and utter joy every time I watch him and talk about him. You know what I mean? I like IU. I I, I, I like Notre Dame, you know. Um, no, I'm not going to tell you if I am uh, lean more towards Michigan or Ohio State because in this area, half of you guys will quit watching me if I tell you uh, who I lean towards there. And you know it. <laughs> um, Terrence Gibbons, go Pats, but I also enjoy watching the Colts. See? Look at that. We have Patriots fans, Steelers fans, Browns fans. Um, I got a Rams guy that comes in here and watches and listens. I love talking about football. About every. How do you know how well your team really is unless you understand the other teams in the NFL, right? And that's that's just how it works, man. Um. Let me get up here and try to see if I can't find something. I said I was going to one more thing out of the chat before I walk out of here. Um, Brandon Wood says, everyone talks about that Titans game, but forgets to mention that we only had like two or three days to prepare when Buckner went out. Yeah, that is true. That That is true. Um, oh, man, I don't see any other questions in here. Um, <laughs> Daniel says, I've got questions for Dequell Jackson. Everybody's got questions for Dequell Jackson. Looky there, Roy Crosby's in here as well. Dolphins fans sitting here listening to this. Love that. Love everybody in here. Uh, Joe Thornburg, obviously, Pittsburgh fan. Great guy. Um, but hey, since I couldn't get it, I just want you guys all to know Thank you so much for listening and watching to me talk about the Indianapolis Colts. Any word on what Patman did to his foot, Mr. J567 asks. That is one that I don't have 100% answers to. Okay? But guys, uh, which member, a part of our Colts roster, do you think will be in the Hall of Fame in the next few years besides Nelson and Leonard, Devin Ward asks. Uh, yeah. We, we got a few guys. Um, we got some guys coming up, right? Some defensive ends that are coming up to being eligible very soon. Okay. Those two defensive ends. As a matter of fact, I'm wearing one of their shirts. All right? That's right. Dwight Freeney, I think. Right? Robert Mathis probably will as well. Won't be first ballot, but I think that he'll make it in, you know, three or four years in that in that process. Don't forget about Reggie Wayne. Right? Reggie Wayne's probably going to make it as well. Again, maybe not first ballot. Give him a couple years. I think he'll make that as well. So, that's my answer to that question. Thank you so much for dropping that, Devin Ward. And I think that's going to end it because we're a half an hour into the podcast. So, I appreciate each and every one of you. Please, if you're watching this on YouTube, smash that like button. Hit subscribe. If you're not subscribed, tag that notification bell so you're notified next time I go live. And until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen. This is Believe in Colts. Part of the of the Believe Podcast Network, and until next time, have a good one.